안녕하세요. 톡투미인 코리아의 안예진입니다. 안녕하세요. 선현우입니다. Today we're going to talk about old Korea and new Korea. 에스케오진. All right. So, today we're not really talking about old Korea and new Korea. We're just talking about well, things that you cannot see these days in Korea. That's right. Like, but that existed in the yeah. past in Korea. Yeah, so we're not going to look at the entire history of uh, Korea, mm -hmm. which is like thousands of years long. <laughs> but we're actually going to look at maybe dozens of years, maybe mm -hmm. 30, 40 years of Korean history, like modern day Korea. So mm -hmm. when you come to visit Korea these days, like this year or next year, there are things that you will experience. Oh, this is Korea. Like those things will make you think of Korea mm -hmm. in a certain way. But then like if you really like dig deeper, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> those things that people take for granted even in Korea, even mm. among native Korean, uh, Koreans, didn't exist maybe 10 years ago, mm. 20 years ago. So we're going to talk about those things that people might be taking too much for, for granted. granted. Yeah. Well, things have changed a lot since I was young, mm -hmm. but it has changed even more since my mom or my dad were young. Exactly. So we're gonna take a look at some things and talk about some things that we don't see these days that much. That's right. So this is not going to be like experts' point of view or anything. Mm. It's just our own experiences mm -hmm. and opinions. So please uh, look up some more resources <laughs> if you want to be totally sure and don't mm -hmm. use our words in a this is paper or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> well, this thing that I want to talk about right now yeah. is really that it shocked me. Oh, really? When you told me, actually, mm -hmm. it okay. shocked me because I didn't know about it. You said that when my mom and my dad were like our moms and our dad were in their 20s and their 30s, they couldn't go abroad? They could. Technically, uh -huh. they could, but it wasn't easy. So the term in Korean is uh -huh. 해외 여행 자유화. Oh. So 해외 is abroad, abroad. overseas, 여행 is travel, 자유화 is liberation or making something free to do something. So mm. 해외 여행 자유화 was only done in 1988 after the Seoul <gasps> Olympic Games. Oh. So before people had to actually file a report or like you know apply to be given the right to travel abroad and those who could travel abroad were mainly students who were uh, going to study abroad because so it's not really for traveling it's for other purposes you had to have a purpose so mm -hmm. free trip like leisure purpose mm -hmm. travels were not really allowed before wow. So uh, people couldn't really, you know, just like, let's go on a honeymoon trip to mm -hmm. the United States or Europe. Mm -hmm. or let's go to Hawaii. Those things couldn't really uh, happen. So that's why, where did your parents go for their honeymoon? Gangwon-do. Gangwon-do, mm. domestic trip. Mm -hmm. My parents went to Jeju-do, Jeju, Jeju mm -hmm. Island for the first time in their lives on their honeymoon because that was the farthest they could <laughs> <laughs> go. Mm. So yeah, um, these days, Korean people travel a lot, most young people, most mm. university students, and universities actually require people to uh, travel abroad and really? stu yeah, study for at least one semester to be able oh. to graduate. Wow. Many university uh, schools do, but these days, yeah, I mean, before, was totally different. I think also kids these days and like we our generation are also different in mm. terms of Hewe Yoheng. That's right. I mean mm -hmm. I the first time I went to any other country was when I was twenty five years old in mm. Korean age. But kids these days they go abroad when they're like one <laughs> Yeah, one, two. two or six, seven since they were really, really young. So uh, things are changing still. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So mm -hmm. just yeah, one interesting fact to know. Free travel overseas was mm. not really a common thing. But it's um, getting more and more more common. Exactly. Mm. And the next thing is the number of students in a classroom in a school. I see. So, <laughs> what was the biggest class that you were a part of? Um, forty something, forty five, forty four. Really? Yeah. So, uh, for the record, we are seven years apart. Mm -hmm. uh, is seven years younger than me, mm -hmm. or I'm seven years younger than me actually. And what? Just, You're okay. Seven <laughs> sorry, sorry about it. So, uh, seven years apart, mm -hmm. and. I got into my elementary school 
1994 and in my case 1988 mm -hmm. or 7 yeah 1987 and um, in elementary school it was common to see especially in my hometown Gwangju the fifth largest city in Korea it was common to see a class of 60 people 60 people yeah 60 students okay. and also there were not enough schools compared to the number of students who were um, mm -hmm. around so some elementary schools would have 오전반 and 오후반 mm -hmm. so morning class afternoon class the same teachers but they would actually make the students come later come later some yeah, half, half of the students come later mm -hmm. like only in the afternoon because mm -hmm. they didn't have enough classrooms mm -hmm. for me like in high school especially i remember having like 32 30s three students in one class but I heard that it's getting the numbers getting smaller and smaller and in my like parents generation more than 60 oh, more than 60 yeah. so the the classroom itself the physical classroom itself is not getting any bigger uh, like smaller mm. so that's why the students in the past they had to they would have to you know keep their desks closer a lot closer than these days that's right mm -hmm. i sometimes go to um other schools like mm -hmm. middle schools or uh, high schools for lectures and mm -hmm. um, also meet with lots of middle school and high school teachers mm -hmm. and i see that the classrooms are a lot more like, spacious spacious like mm -hmm. yeah there are fewer desks than mm -hmm. uh, my high school years which was only like 18 years ago 17 <laughs> years. yeah okay. so i mean like com like in the grand scheme of things uh -huh. it's not really like mm. that much of a time so yeah things have changed and the classes are becoming smaller and smaller in korea too i know it's happening in other countries too but mm. just wanted to give you an idea of mm. how big a class was maybe 20 years ago and the change has happened in a very very short time exactly um speaking of school have you ever been bitten by your teacher or beach? what do you mean have have i ever been because i have always been beaten like you know all the time by really? our yeah yeah i mean it was a common thing not that it's a good thing mm. but uh it's something that was really common that is disappearing that mm. has disappeared maybe mm. in korea over the course of maybe 20 years um not even that like really yeah. like 10 years mm. maybe so in high school i would like have my teacher like not I would not ask them but my teacher would like beat me like here like on the face <gasps> on the face on, even? on my laps on my like shin even <gasps> like I mean I, I don't want to go into details about what kind of torture there was in wow. high school but it was all regarded as a common thing like natural mm -hmm. thing to do if someone didn't do a homework didn't mm -hmm. do an assignment or didn't do well enough in uh -huh. a test or do not behave in the classroom yeah whatever you do to deserve any punishment <gasps> wow. the, the only type of punishment would be corporate punishment like you mm. would get by your teachers so uh, what about yourself for me i'm not sure if it's because i am younger than you or because i'm a girl i didn't get hit by that way mm -hmm. just you know like mo much more systematic um, like what? punishment like, like they would bring a stick mm. and hit your um, yeah. palm which is not too bad but i heard that it's even that is not allowed these yeah. days yeah yeah it's not allowed and it's for the better of course mm. like you should never hit your students you mm. should never beat anybody for mm. any reason but uh just let it out there um, mm. it was common back then like even in my high school days or middle school days and i said i wouldn't go into too many details about like how i was bitten but um just to give you an idea um my teacher my math teacher would do a really stylish taekwondo round kick <gasps> on my chest <gasps> and then i wasn't surprised by the fact that i was like hit because i was studying english in his mathematics class so and you he did got, something wrong that's i did sure, something but... wrong but he, he made me stand up and he was like he was a taekwondo master Bam, and um, I got hit here. But one thing I was more surprised than the kick, because it was like happening every day, like to some somebody at least. There was a mirror behind me, so I was afraid. I wasn't really shocked by the kick or anything. I was afraid that I might hit the mirror and break the mirror, right? So I was like, hitting is okay. I mean, I did something wrong, but oh, mirror, you know, the mirror was a bigger fear factor for me. And then also like people would uh, teachers would be carrying like mm. bamboo sticks right mm. and if you hit your student here like on <gasps> the on the laps really? it hurts but it heals really easily uh -huh. like over like, maybe one week later you wouldn't have any traces um and also like maybe your butts mm -hmm. but then some eviler uh, teachers <laughs> would look for parts that would hurt more so like here 
or shins. That's tormenting. Yeah, not yeah. Punishment. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, just saying that back then it was uh, common. Wow. And what's interesting is parents, when I got hit, uh -huh. I mean, beaten by my teachers, and uh -huh. I would go home, my parents wouldn't be upset at the teacher. Of course, they uh -huh. were mad, but they were not like they wouldn't get angry at the teacher. You know, of course, I did something to deserve uh -huh. it, right? So they would say, "What did you do to get this?" Why did so you have to? they were mad at you. Yeah. Mm. So, but now, if you mm. just so much as touch mm -hmm. somebody's hair, and you, they will call your yeah, call you mm -hmm. and just you know, I don't know, a, a whole <clears throat> lawsuit could begin. <laughs> At the, yeah. Well, there's this incident about a decade ago, like a ten years ago. I'm not sure, but like um, someone, I'm not sure if it was in high school or middle school. This teacher did the thing, but not as harsh as this. I mm -hmm. think it was just so you know, like a, on the palm uh -huh. thing. So which is not really that bad because yeah. they don't really hit really hard it's just a gesture mm. but the student called the police oh. so it yeah, was yeah. a huge issue in this society whether if it's okay for the teachers to hit the students but a lot of people are more shocked by the students yeah. like behavior how how she was you know how she dare yeah, yeah yeah why would you mm. call the police it's a matter that happened mm. within school you have to try to solve it within school right yeah. but yeah i mean after some incidents similar to that mm -hmm. i guess um people have changed the way they look at corporal punishment mm -hmm. so yep that's so what's it's happening it's no longer existing <laughs> yeah no longer no longer mm. common mm. okay uh the next one is the kindergarten mm. because we are on the line of schooling ah <laughs> uh, yeah so Hyunwoo, yeah. did your parents go to any like kindergarten or like preschool no not really um mm. the official uh, required education mm -hmm. only starts from elementary school so yeah. kindergarten is not a must it's not an mm. obligation even now so my parents didn't go to Yuchiwan. Yuchiwan is kindergarten, by the mm -hmm. way. So I, I don't think there were many Yuchiwans around yeah. to begin with. So my parents didn't go to Yuchiwan, but I did. And my sisters, two younger sisters did. And um, How many years were you in Yuchiwan? I was actually there for six months only. Six months? Yes, because my mom couldn't afford a year's mm -hmm. Uh, tuition mm -hmm. so uh, she wanted to trick me into thinking that I went there so she wanted <laughs> to give me only memories of attending kindergarten because I, I, I have oh. memories of attending a kindergarten uh -huh. I, don't, I still remember the song that I used to oh. sing na, 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 na. Like, I, 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 I still remember the melody uh -huh. but I had no idea that I was only for mm. only there for six months mm -hmm the six like the last six months because i also attended the mm. grand generation ceremony mm -hmm. but anyway uh, i was there for six months and you were there for i was there uh for a year mm. but usually my friends were there for two years so, so yeah. like at the age of six i didn't go any kindergarten so i asked my mom mom why is everyone going to yuchiwan but not me <laughs> even my brother was going yuchiwan so my mom said actually she couldn't afford to send two kids to the kindergarten for two years so she didn't um send me to yuchiwan for the year first yeah. year but she said oh i just wanted to spend more time with <laughs> you <laughs> that's very wise i'll say the same thing to myself <laughs> Okay, it, um, anyway. So two year or one year is actually was very common yeah. in our generation. But these days, since Yuchiwan is, the term Yuchiwan is still reserved for kindergartens for maybe, you know, young children, preschool children, mm -hmm. people also have come up with the name Orini Jip. Orini Jip. Orini means child or kid, and Jip means house. So children's house, mm -hmm. Orini Jip. Orini Jip, what they do is they actually look after children when their parents are too busy mm -hmm. working outside so orange jeeps have kids ranging from maybe two years old all the way up to four years old five years old or even seven years old or um eight years old after school oh after you two one yeah they would go to orange jeep because their parents are still not home yet you know that's kind of sad though. Yeah, yeah but it's like it's hard to not work like these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. So before, since we're comparing old Korea and new mm. Korea, before people didn't really have to uh, send their kids to Orini Jib when mm. they're as young as like two years old or like one year old. But now, since both parents are working and there's nobody else, like families are becoming smaller, mm. there's no 할머니, 할아버지 mm -hmm. to look after 
uh, the, the baby. I was looked after entirely by my grandmother because oh. my parents were both working most of the time. Uh -huh. So I remember spending a lot of time with my grandmother, which I'm sure you do remember doing the same. Mm -hmm. But these days um, in Korea, people can't do that. So like, because I recently had, I mean, a baby, um, my wife and I, I started looking into all the Egypts. Like, oh. okay, so what are these <laughs> things doing? You know, mm -hmm. what do they do? And what do I need to do to actually send my child mm -hmm. to Arin Egypt and I was surprised that uh, all of these Arin Egypts, all mm -hmm. of these places have really high competence like like oh. what do you call it like to get into the competence Arin Egypt? yeah mm -hmm. um, to get into it like so uh, for example one place I looked at near my house was mm -hmm. uh, the capacity was 35 students not students 35 children 35 babies mm -hmm. but then the number of people waiting in line, like online, mm -hmm. was 350 people. So only after those 350 kids were accepted, you know, uh -huh. admitted and then graduated, would then my son be can... able to go. Yeah, wow. so it would take like three years or something. So people actually apply for Arini Jibs right after their baby is born. Oh, yeah, that's so crazy. it's becoming really, really common. So oh. when you look at how I or Hyojin mm -hmm. spent the majority of like our free time, like just wandering around the neighborhood, like doing mm -hmm. whatever, <laughs> like you know, playing with rocks and dirt, like for good for a good six, seven years, and now one year after your birth, you are like in some Send kind of yeah, uh, institute. So it's yeah, kind of sad. Kind of sad, but what can we do about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that remind me of something more, mm -hmm. which is learning Hangul, about learning Hangul. Well, when I was little, I think I learned Hangul before you Chiwon with something called Hakseopji. So Hakseopji is like a um, workbook kind of thing. Delivered to you. Yeah, delivered to you, so you can study with it. And I remember my brother was studying Hangul and I just, you know, sit, sat there next to him and learned with him. So that was common for my age, but I think for my dad or my mom's generation, you're one of the most important goal to go to an elementary school is to learn how to read and write Hangul. That's right. So it's a very, very, like something that only those who edu are educated can do. Yeah. So before in Korea, the literacy rate was much lower mm -hmm. so people actually waited until they went to elementary school mm -hmm. to learn Hangul the writing system of Korean of the Korean language mm -hmm. which you can learn within a few hours actually <laughs> on your own True. with our Hangul master book, book. <laughs> um, so yeah but now these days I think uh, the children learn Hangul even like younger like three, three years old four Two, years old three years old yeah. and on top of that they learn english as well that's when right they were young I, i've heard like numerous stories uh, from my friends how about how um they have not prepared their children uh with like any english education they thought okay elementary school they will or teach. kindergarten they will their it's their responsibility to teach my child english or the alphabet but then um one of my friends actually wanted to send her daughter to um, this Yuchiwon, mm -hmm. and the Yuchiwon actually said, "Oh, we don't teach the alphabet. <gasps> your your daughter should have learned before, wow. like coming to our elementary school because we start from basic conversation." <laughs> so she was shocked. Um, so oh yeah, God. like the expected starting point for learning languages like English, Chinese, maybe, and um, Eng I mean. Korean, of course, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, is Are getting lower and uh, lower. Yeah, yeah, like earlier and earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like for as for English, for us, we started learn middle school. Middle school, yeah. and my dad and my mom. I'm not sure. Maybe middle school or high school. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. So it's things are changing. Yeah, I see a lot of like really enthusiastic moms, um, like around me, mm -hmm. like random like strangers in McDonald's or Starbucks or you know places like that where people can associate the brand to like foreign countries. <laughs> I see many moms like telling their kids, like five-year-old kids to order in English. Like, and McDonald's? Yeah, yeah, I've seen some. In someone. Korea? Yeah, yeah. Like wow. not, not everybody, but like, mm. I've seen just like really like more than five times. Wow. That's so yeah, people are more like more keen on making yeah, sure. Like when I yeah. walk with my foreigner friends or hang out with them, I hear a lot of moms yeah. saying, Go, yeah, go or like English. you have to be fluent yeah. enough to speak like that, yeah. something like that. Yeah, I have, have a friend from Finland mm -hmm. who is married to a Korean woman and they have three children. 
Oh. I think two, yeah, two children, and they are, the children are bilingual in Finnish and Korean. Ooh. And they look, um, they, they have blonde hair, they look Western. Like Western people. So when, whenever they're playing in the playground, a lot of moms, they actually push their, like, elbow their babies. <sighs> Hey, go talk to those kids. Go play with them. Play with the kids in English. But these kids do not speak any English. So they, <laughs> they are always frustrated. Like these kids always talk to us in English. I don't know English. Right, like that. So it's a, an interesting Kinda situation <laughs> that reflects what mm. Korean moms want to do these days. Meat and potatoes of the book. Learning Hangul. This first unit is on single vowels. So as you can see, each letter is broken down into...